Hi, and welcome to Coffee With. I'm your host, Christopher Evans. And joining me today on Coffee With is a longtime friend, Max Miller. Hi, Max. Good morning. You've had a great career in a wide variety of areas, marketing and branding and as a legal counsel mm -hmm. with some pretty big brands, Heinz and mm -hmm. uh, the University of Pittsburgh, as well as some time with Big Brothers and Big Sisters. But you're also an entrepreneur. Talk to us a little bit about how you got where you are. I immersed myself really in a lot of different areas. So when I started practicing law, uh, I got to see a lot of different parts of the business, understanding corporations, understanding how they work, and really cut my teeth on what's the infrastructure that's really driving this business. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you start to see those things, you start to really understand how a business works, how you get to scale. They made the mistake of sending me back to business school. <laughs> and uh, when they did that, it really opened my eyes to really how what I'd learned really about that whole value structure could be applied in a lot of different places. So Raise Your Spirits is the company you started, yes. which is a luxury brand company. Yes. Tell us a little bit about how the company works and, sure. and kind of how it, uh, it benefits clients. And sure, we like to call ourselves a sensory marketing firm. Uh, also a sensory experience firm, it just depends on the context, but certainly we are entirely focused on distilled products. Uh, one of my biggest learnings when I first started this was just about how little exposure a smaller brand might have. Uh, when you look at the regulatory structure of, of the industry, it's really, there's a lot of channel power around distribution. Uh, four or five, maybe six different distributors are really controlling large parts of the market. That means that in order for a small brand to really succeed, you need to have a little bit of extra firepower, if you will. Uh, the hand selling, the really educating people about brands that they may not know about. And really that's the niche that we fit in. Uh, we partner with chefs to do customized meal pairings with the spirits so that people really start to engage with the spirit the same way that the wine category has done. Uh, and that really has uh, worked for us. When you start to see the education level go up around the spirit, then you start to see people not just buying their you know, standard scotch they've been buying all their lives, but they start to learn about the scotch category. How can you advise the small business owner to embrace marketing and branding and be effective with it despite a limited budget? On the brand side, it's really just about credibility, right? And in terms of do what you say you're going to do and build the kinds of partnerships with people that are going to support you. I mean, Pittsburgh is a great town for partnerships. I mean, it's, um, I say the town has been good to me as a, not growing up here and then coming here, just a distinct difference between certainly the Philadelphia culture and <laughs> the Pittsburgh culture, to say the least. <laughs> Intimately familiar. Yeah, uh, but both great in their own ways, but certainly Pittsburgh, the size of it sort of allows you to get exposure to people that you probably wouldn't get exposure to in a larger city as quickly. And so the small business owners, I'd say immerse yourself in your category. In Pittsburgh, you could actually call someone or probably know someone who's two, two or three degrees separated from you who has some insight in your business and you have to really take the time to, to do that because yes. people here will, will talk with you and it's really that education about your own category that's going to give you insights into what you may need to do differently. Just the conversation can get you to the at least two great leads here in Pittsburgh almost every time. So it's building that network, it's getting out there, it's showing value and perhaps reciprocity in value, right? Lots of reciprocity and lots of uh, sensitivity to what's missing in the market. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's really the biggest um, insight I think I've had about running my own business, but certainly teaching about businesses is that you really have to be sensitive to what's missing, what's not there now, right? That your business might be able to fill or that by partnering with someone, you'll be able to fill that gap. And that it's the gap where the value tends to be. Working in a startup yeah. is not like working in a big brand. No, it's not. What do you think the biggest challenge was when you opened your first business? You have to have a real comfort with ambiguity. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have to um, obviously be willing to fail, uh, but also be confident that what you're doing is the right thing. And if you're not, you have to be willing to back away from it as quickly as possible. Talk to me a little bit about, and to our, our guests, a little bit about innovation's role in Pittsburgh. Clearly with the public-private ventures that are around, you know, from universities and incubators and the like, there's certainly um, a lot of fertile ground for uh, businesses that are looking to sort of uh, leverage that, right? So 
you know, even capital aside, there's infrastructures being built, obviously, with university partnerships and small businesses and that are there that are growing. And so innovation to me is really just about the gap filling we were talking about. It's sort of about understanding where a market is going and either disrupting it or getting ahead of it and being prepared for when the market catches up to you. There's a lot of different perspectives on that. But certainly I think innovation is about filling those gaps. You have to sort of be ready, willing, and able. You gotta have what, what's needed at the time the gap yeah. forms. Uh, and that sometimes, timing is everything, you know, as a saying, but certainly in business, it's, um, you have to, the cycle times, right, for some of the businesses are different. So uh, obviously there's a lot of technology innovation here in town, which has, you know, some much short cycle times in a lot of instances, if it's just software as a service, but on the manufacturing side, and certainly on the spirit side, <laughs> where you have aging products, you know, that takes a while to get to market, you're going to have to do some different kind of innovative things to kind of fill that uh, pipeline, you know, of opportunity if your product's not going to be ready for several years. Everything that we talk about now isn't just about the tasting, but it's actually about business development and client development for the company, mm -hmm. right? And so every business is looking for that new way to engage with their clients. And really, Raise Your Spirits now is just a, a, a facilitating tool. You know, it's sort of is one more uh, arrow in the quiver, if you will, of a corporate entity that's looking to engage people in a new way. When you start looking at the way that people engage with spirits and the timing of when they purchase things, obviously you have to be there and ready when they want to do a purchase or whether they want to some information about the product, it needs to be there and available. And clearly, I mean, you know this from your business that yes. yeah, the market is shifting Absolutely. You know, totally to mobile. I do think that um, certain brands also are going to be more open to how partners like us can use technology to help them. You know, uh, whether, you know, the QR comes or goes, who knows the fate of it. Yeah. But uh, technologies like that that allow for information to be shared relatively quickly clearly are going to be a part of the equation. It's just a matter of, um, at least for spirits brands, making sure that that information is available when somebody's making a purchase decision or when they're wanting to learn more about you know, a particular spirits category. Well, Max, with these great products, it sounds like we probably should have had Manhattans or single malt scotch with, yes. but we're glad to have had you on Coffee With. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks so much. And yeah. thank you for joining us on Coffee With.